What's happening, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Side Guys Football Forum. I am one of your co-hosts, Norman Desai, joined as always by my good friend, my good buddy, the other half of the Side Guys, Mr. Tad Desai. And Tad, we took a nice week off for Thanksgiving. I know you flew home to see your family. How was your Thanksgiving break, buddy? It was good. I got to see my niece for the very few, uh, very first time. She's just about four months old now, so that was a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, it was basically a glorified babysitter, which was <laughs> both fun and annoying at the same time. So it's it's nice to be you know back in solitary confinement here, back in my apartment. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, for me it was just uh, you know. It's not a big holiday that we celebrate in our household, so I mean it was just a day off. Just watched a lot of football. Hey, man. Met day, up with the family for dinner. Always good. A hundred percent, hundred percent. It was my sister's birthday over the weekend, so we did celebrate that as well. So it was good times as well. So yeah, overall it was a relaxing, nice weekend. Like you said, nice to have a couple days off. Took a little bit of a break from the podcast. I missed you, buddy, but you know I it's nice to spend too, some man. time with family. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, we're back so now, yeah, though that's all that matters. We're back now. It's true. It's true. So we're coming back at it. We're here in week 13. We definitely want to get you some waiver wire additions because, yeah, <clears throat> we keep talking about this. Fantasy playoffs are right around the corner, so you definitely need to be prepared for that. You definitely need to have the right players on your roster. Real quick, real quick. Who's uh, who's first place in our league, by the way? <laughs> I just I, I don't know. I need a, I need a little refresher here. Yeah, I did have a uh, lapse in judgment. I thought Cam Newton would do better against oh. the Dolphins than Matthew Stafford against the Packers, but, you know, it was completely the opposite. So, yeah, you are in first place, but it really doesn't matter because we have both secured playoff spots. So, you know, it really yes, matters. It matters. Screw it, you. It's going to matter what happens in the playoffs. But, yes, let's worry about our waiver wire picks for this week so we can let everybody else out there prepare their best as they head into the postseason, as they try and fight their way for any playoff spots that are still dangling out there for them. And of course, if they're already secured a playoff spot like both of us, maybe they need to make sure that their roster is secure to obviously make a deep push in the playoffs, possibly win a title. So Tad, let's go through it here. You know, it's definitely slim pickets. We say this the last couple of weeks here, but we definitely want to try and carve out a couple of uh, names that we have out there by week teams. You know, there are some good teams that have some good fantasy players out there. The Browns are in a bye week this week, the Packers, the Titans and the Panthers. So, you know, if you're missing some players out there from any of those teams, you definitely need to find a waiver wire replacement. So that's where we got you covered so tad who do you like this week at the quarterback position for week 13 so stop me if you've heard this one before uh i like Derek carr <laughs> i know i yeah. know we've yeah. we've talked him up a lot i know but like Amir said look like the the pickings are getting very slim now so we we kind of have to pick and choose even if we've chosen those players before so Derek Carr, I'm cheating a little bit here because he's available in 61% of ESPN. Or, excuse me. He is taken in 61% of ESPN leagues. So he's not quite reaching that 40% threshold that we set at the very beginning of the season of like, okay, we can't talk about this guy unless he's available in 40% of leagues. But I, I decided to cheat a little bit. But look, I mean... <laughs> Derek Carr, I think with the the this new Raiders offense, they're clearly much more pass happy. You can very much see that with Josh Jacobs' uh, performances. I think if you're Josh Jacobs, uh, if you have him on your roster, you're very happy because I think their new coach is doing a very good job of implementing him in this offense. Basically, this offense is not stuck in 2000 anymore, which is really, really nice. S so I, I really like Derek Carr going forward. While he has struggled against some of the better defenses, he's capitalized brilliantly against some of the poorer defenses in the NFL. So you look at what he's done against Kansas City, against Philadelphia. He put up 18 points against the Chiefs, 21 points against Denver. He put up 18 points again against Philadelphia. And then you look at what he did against the Dallas defense in I'm heard this is a very weird sentence I'm about to say. He did very well against a good Dallas defense. <laughs> I never thought I'd say good Dallas yeah, defense. In lots my life. of weird things in that sentence. That's yeah. Derek what Carr world being good, Dallas defense doing good as well. Yeah, that's an interesting I sentence. I mean, right Mike, there. I know Trayvon Diggs' son thanked all the quarterbacks throwing to his dad, but still, that was adorable. Like, <laughs> that was great. I love that. 
<laughs> but uh, yeah, Dallas's defense is good, and Derek Carr still uh, put up 20 points against them. So I really like what he has going forward, especially because he's going against. I, uh, you know what? Screw it. I will own this bad take. I said they were Super Bowl favorites. I'm wrong. That was a horrible take by me. The Washington football team has the last ranked defense against quarterbacks in fantasy football this season. Don't don't you say anything. Don't you I see <laughs> I'm not you gearing anything. up. Don't you I'm not saying anything. Don't you do it. I see Just you gearing up faces, for it. That's all. <laughs> I know. I know. Don't you do it. So anyways, Derek Carr is now this next week going up against the last ranked Washington secondary when it comes to fantasy football. And like I just said, he did very well against a top ranked Dallas secondary. So he will do very well there. And I mean, look, if, if you need any more evidence that this secondary sucks, Russell Wilson is terrible. And he still put up 18-plus points on them. I'm a DK Metcalf guy. I have him on my roster now. He put up .7 points, something like that, and Russell Wilson still managed to put up 18-plus points, meaning that no matter who they're throwing to, the quarterback will do well. So I think Derek Carr, especially as a streaming option, but honestly, as a long-term, long-term, meaning like next three weeks option, I like Derek Carr a lot. Yeah, um, he's got a good matchup against Washington. Washington did play somewhat well against Seattle on Monday Night Football, but yeah, they did break it up at the very end of the game, too, so it's like it wasn't consistent enough the entire game. Um, Yeah, weird thing about DK Metcalf, he didn't get his first catch in that game until one minute was left in the fourth quarter. I I I thought it was a glitch on ESPN. I honestly, I, I looked at it, I was like, there's no way that's zero points. I kept refreshing, thinking that was a glitch. Yeah, so that was super weird. Um, yeah, Russell Wilson just not looking the same. Um, you know, one thing to back you up, though, with your Washington take is that they're currently the seventh spot in the NFC wildcard chase there. So they have Still a chance. Alive, baby. They Still have a alive. chance. <laughs> so we'll see like what that, happens I feel like there. that Jim Carrey gif. So you're telling me there's oh, a chance. Yeah. From Dumb and Dumber, 100%. <laughs> yeah, so there's a chance. We'll see exactly how it plays out these final weeks out here. So, yeah, Derek Carr, I mean, it's a name we've said many times before. You know, there's a lot of names that we said before that we kind of wanted to avoid, but you know what? He's got a good matchup against Washington. I think he can have a good day. You could have a good week for you, especially if you're missing Aaron Rodgers, Ryan Tannehill. Maybe if you have Baker Mayfield for some reason, you need to swap him out for some reason. If you, so. if you have Cam Newton, you're screwed already. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. So not a bad addition. So I'm gonna give you a little bit more of a wild card addition here for you, Tad, and that's Taysom Hill of the New Orleans I love Saints. It. I love it. This is a very interesting pick. So he is widely available he's only rostered in 2.2 percent of espn leagues and only five percent of yahoo i'm honestly shocked it's that high (laughs) so you could go and get him the big thing too is that he's playing on the short week so if you're going to pick him up you definitely need to start him sooner like don't think about it and you know wait until the weekend because then his game will go (laughs) from here so yeah it's not shocking the norland saints they kind of want to break the monotony they had trevor simeon as a starting quarterback past couple weeks he was pretty good he was living the turnover up until the game against the Eagles where he threw what four I think I think he threw maybe two or three I can't remember multiple interceptions for sure like that was the first time he threw an interception this season like they finally see that's like yeah this is not a guy that we want starting long term obviously you know since they won against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in week eight which is the same game where James Winston tore his ACL they have not won a game since then. Like, I mean, they're clearly like they have some issues on offense. Defense is playing okay. But once again, we've talked about this before. If your offense is not able to do anything, your defense is going to get tired and they're going to have to give up yards, give up points. It's just going to lead to you losing the game, which is so far what's been happy with the Saints. So insert Taysom Hill, you know, he's been dealing with a foot injury. That's why he's been the emergency quarterback the past couple of weeks here. But they're giving him the first team reps. They're planning to give him the first team reps the rest of this week. They want to see how he is. Um, he's not a threat as a thrower. I think we can obviously you know, determine that. Whoa. Like I mean, every so often we'll see a possible of a threat here. But he is main added value to this Saints offense is the fact that he's such a gifted runner. So you throw into the fact that Alvin Kamara is finally going to be healthy as well. Like he just missed the last yeah, couple of maybe. weeks with an knee injury. So he's been practicing. He's trending towards playing in that game against the Cowboys on Thursday. Mark Ingram is obviously still on the roster. So they can have a very lethal rushing attack with all three of those guys 
guys in the backfield could really just, you know, ground and pound, play a very old school type of game where it's like, run the ball, play really good defense, and they could beat these Cowboys team that's really sort of fading here a little bit. You know, they lost that overtime game against the Raiders on Thursday night. They just, you know, Mike McCarthy's out with COVID. I am in, so it's just I'm like, living in Dallas, man. Be careful. You were going to put a hit out on me. <laughs> so it's going to be interesting to see how this game goes. You know, Cowboys were 5-1 and one heading into the bye week. They're now 7-4. and four. So like I said, there's some, there's a little chinks in the armor there. So it's like, this is a game that the Saints could take advantage of, especially with inserting a new quarterback Taysom Hill inject some life into the offense a little bit you know maybe use him out wide bring, bring back Trevor Simeon you know there's a lot of things they could do with the healthy Taysom Hill out there so it's just if you need a you know a wild card addition like I said this is very much like a lottery pick like he could look really good or he could look very much just like you know yeah look all right I, I feel like you like Simeon. Charlie and always sunny where it's just like wild card bitches <laughs> exactly. and then he just like dives out of the van <laughs> Um, so yeah, they play the Cowboys this week. After that, they play the Jets. Then they follow that up with a tough Bucks team, but then they finish the season against the Dolphins, the Panthers, and the Falcons. So I mean, it's not a bad schedule, especially if they start them the rest of the way. Taysom Hill, like I said, could be a you know sneaky addition to your fantasy roster, especially if you're trying to fight for a playoff spot. If you're already in the playoffs, he could be a very good you know matchup based start for you. Could really you know throw a wrench into your matchup against who you're playing. So Taysom Hill, if you have the space, go at him. I Yeah, I like that addition a lot, especially because exactly what you said is, well, first off, yes, he is a passing threat. How dare you, sir? But uh, <laughs> while he is passing may not be his specialty, rushing definitely that's is. That's the main thing. That's Yeah, exactly. Thing, yeah. So, it, you know, that's always the thing with those type of quarterbacks. That's why Cam Newton at his peak was such a great fantasy quarterback was because, sure, you'd have, you know, one or two passing touchdowns, which was great. But he would also get those two or three rushing touchdowns, which counts for two or three points more, depending on your, uh, you know, fancy structure, your league lineup or something like that. So, yeah, I think that Taysom Hill can get you those rushing touchdowns, which counts for more. So, honestly, if you're it, here's the thing, if you are struggling for a fourth spot in that, you know, 10 team league uh, playoff, then go for it. Because I think that that those two points can make the entire difference of if you make the playoffs or not. So, yeah, I, I think if you are willing to go all in and just totally gamble, Taysom Hill's a great bet. 100%. 100%. Let's move on to the running back position here, Tad. Who do you like here in Week 13 for running backs as far as waiver wire additions? I mean, let's be honest here. Like, we're, 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 it, it was basically like who has uh, Chuba Hubbard, who has Al Alex uh, Madison. So, I mean, I'll, I'll take Madison here. So, I like him <laughs> a lot because, you know, Dalvin Cook, obviously, we never cheer for an injury. Um, man, talk about a rough stretch. That was like, what, three play stretch where uh, Dalvin Cook went down and then Debo Samuel went down? That was. It was it was pretty consecutive. Yeah, I wouldn't say it was a three play stretch, but yeah, it was within like you know a couple minutes of you know drives there. But just yeah, it was very interesting yeah, was set of crazy. events there. So luckily, Debo Samuel's looking a little less severe. He may be back this week. Uh, Dalvin Cook, unfortunately, first off, the hell is going on in Minnesota? Because I think it was Schefter tweeted out that okay, Cook is basically done for the season. He is if the Vikings make the playoffs, maybe he'll play. And then earlier today of recording, which is Tuesday, by the way, uh, Mike Zimmer came out. I was like, no, 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 he's day by day. What? Like, I, I don't know. Anyway, either way, Dalvin Cook is going to miss at least a week, probably two. And my guess, definitely three, which means Alexander Madison is a three-week starter at running back for the Minnesota Vikings. And here's what I really, really like when it comes to Madison, is when he has had 20-plus touches, he's also posted 20-plus points this season. So when he gets the opportunity, he produces. So I really, really like Madison as an instant running back one. I did not say that wrong. I am telling you, if Madison is the starter from here on out, that is the most valuable waiver wire pickup of this season. Alexander Madison, keep an eye out for him because he plays the Lions next week. 
They're 30th ranked in run defense. They He plays the Steelers after that. They're 21st ranked in defense. They play the Bears after that. They're 15th ranked in run defense. He has such a favorable schedule, such a favorable system of offense that works towards his favor. Like, it's just... I. If you can get Alexander Madison on the waiver wire and you're in playoff contention in your league, you will be so thankful. And I am I, I told him her before we started recording this episode, I am staying up tonight to make sure I get Alexander Madison because I want him so badly. That's how much I believe that he is the best waiver wire pickup this week. Yeah, he's a worthy addition. So based on all the reports I've seen, it seems like Dalvin Cook is for sure going to miss two weeks. But yeah, I think I lean more towards what you're I, saying with three weeks. That, that yeah, that's one of those things. Like a little bit longer. maybe, maybe, and even if he comes back, how much are they really going to like lean on him? I th- I could see like a split share load there in that third week. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And just to confirm something else that you mentioned, Debo Samuel did get hurt in that game as well. He is confirmed to miss two weeks as well. So that's oh, going to be something see, to keep in mind. Last I saw, he was so. doubtful. So, okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So he's going to miss two weeks as well with a groin injury. Um, but yeah, Alexander Madison is a worthy addition for Brandon, sure off the waiver okay. wire if he's available. This guy did not make our list, but Brandon Ayuk then. If you can trade, uh, he's not on waivers. He's not on waivers. But if you can trade for Brandon, Brandon Ayuk, go for him then. And if, if he's available on waivers, too, because he's started playing strong a couple weeks now, but there may be still people that are a little bit hesitant as far as value. But, yeah, definitely with the Samuel injury, a lot of people are going to be going after him. But, yeah, he could be a really good addition as well. He has very similar skill set that Debo Samuel has. So maybe all the things that Debo was doing, you know, getting the run, uh, the touches in the backfield that he was doing, Ayuk could do some of those similar things. We'll see how this offense plays out for sure because the 49ers coming alive, and they're fighting for a playoff spot. They're right now at the number six seed, so we'll see how that all plays out for them for sure sure, but. sure buddy sure. <laughs> um so yeah you already mentioned this earlier alexander Mans and chuba hubbard are the two guys that you want to go after so yeah we'll talk about chuba hubbard here for a little bit um christian mccaffrey is done for the rest of the 2021 season he rolled his ankle last week so they're just putting him on the shelf and it's going to go with chuba hubbard amir abdullah and royce freeman as their running backs but big thing is that Hubbard has been the main guy when Christian McCaffrey was out. I know they signed uh, Amir Abdullah towards the end of October. They wanted to use him to share some carries with uh, Chuba Hubbard and Royce Freeman, and they wanted to use him in the special team. So, I mean, there is a little bit of value with him, but it's mainly more in the passing game too. But still, Chuba Hubbard is the leader as far as this team, as far as, you know, touches. He leads the team in touches, and he's third on the team in total scrimmage yards as well. So, I mean, like, this guy is the focal point of the offense with Christian McCaffrey out there. That is obviously so, you know, Panthers are on a bye week this week, so you may not have so much competition for him on the waiver wire to grab him. But obviously with the Christian McCaffrey injury, there may be a little bit of competition still, but he's a good addition. The only thing that worries me a little bit about Chuba Hubbard is that the schedule that he has after the bye week is pretty tough as far as facing really strong run defense. He plays the Falcons, the Bills, the Bucks twice, and the Saints. With the section of the Falcons, the did Bills, the just, Bucks, and the I Saints say, did all you just currently have— the Falcons is a tough defense? Well, you didn't let me finish. So besides the Falcons, the Bills, the Bucks, and the Saints all currently have a top 10 rushing defense as far as allowing the fewest rushing yards allowed. So— if the Panthers were to fall behind, I don't know how much they'd lean on the run game, which would limit the value for Chuba Hubbard. But, you know, if they were to play it close, obviously there's a couple division games there. Uh, maybe there's a situation where, you know, the opposing team, they've secured a playoff spot towards the end of the season. They may rest some guys. You know, there's a possibility that they may, you know, Panthers may have a chance there. So we'll see. Panthers are still fighting for a playoff spot too. So, you know, they're going to give their best. And so Chuba Hubbard still has value, but definitely I like Alexander Madison more than Chuba Hubbard, but both guys are worthy additions for your fantasy roster. Let's move things along here, Tad. Let's get into the wide receiver position. Who do you like for week uh, 13 here? Uh, let's go for the Hail Mary here. Uh, hey, look, maybe he finally works out now. Uh, Kenny Galladay? Maybe? <laughs> oh, boy. Hopefully. You know, I, even... I saw this pick, Tad, and unfortunately I want to throw something in as well. I know it's not the uh, greatest addition. Don't tell me. No, hurt. no, no. No, no. Okay, He's perfectly right. fine. But what I'm hearing is that Daniel Jones may be hurt. So oh, if they're gonna have bitch. to if they're gonna have to go with Mike Glennon, that just totally oh, affects. Oh no, that's a backup. <laughs> yes. So that will affect uh, you know, uh Kenny Galladay, Kadarius Tony, all those receivers out there. So go ahead with your take, but I just want to throw that wrinkle in there as you 
give your take. <laughs> that's not a wrinkle. That's a nuclear bomb. <laughs> Deep fissure <laughs> as opposed to a wrinkle. <laughs> All right, let's go on pretending like it's Taylor Jones the starter. Let me pull up my notes real quick. I feel way less confident as this now, but <laughs> all right, Kenny Galladay. So this one's all about the Jason Garrett. God, I feel so much worse. Why didn't you tell me this before the I'm show? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> now, okay, I will say though, even okay. Actually, you know what? I'm going to turn this into positive. You ready for this? Go for How it. How about this Let's for a spin? Let's see How it. How about this for a spin? Sleeves are up. Sleeves are up. <clears throat> I remember, what is the one stat I always look at when it comes to receivers? Volume. Volume. Otherwise known as targets. Absolutely correct. So, Kenny Galladay, the week after Jason Garrett gets fired, saw seven targets last week. So, that means that... Finally, I mean, I can't believe it took, you know, three-fourths of the season, but the Giants offense has finally figured out, hey, maybe we should look at the guy we just paid $50 million to. He had seven targets, including one in the end zone that he dropped. I don't know how many people were watching that game, but he did have a touchdown grab that he did drop, so that would have been an extra four or six points, depending on your fantasy format. So, I think that this offense will start revolving more and more around Kenny Galladay because with Jason Garrett now gone, this is now a competent offense, which means they recognize they have a great talent in Kenny Galladay and they will keep looking his way. And here's where I'm going to put the spin on it. What do we always say with tight ends with young quarterbacks, right? They always look to their, uh, you know, their tight ends as the safety blankets. Well, with Mike Glennon, Kenny Galladay could be a safety blanket. So we could see that as Kenny Galladay actually may see some more, you know, target share as a result of Daniel Jones being out because Daniel Jones is a mobile quarterback, which I think takes some targets away from his wide receivers. So I actually like Kenny Galladay a lot right now. So he's available in about 40% of ESPN leagues. So look, if you're really hurting for a receiver that you can keep on your bench, potentially start in that flex position, Kenny Galladay is your guy. How about that for a spin? <laughs> it's not bad. It's not bad. I definitely do like the spin of the fact that they fired Jason Garrett. You're seeing a little bit more effectiveness I mean, out of ev the, everyone in Manhattan is loving that. Spin. Out of the all the playmakers, you're seeing more effectiveness out of them in on the New York Giants offense. So yeah, that could be a good side for the receivers. Could be a good side for uh, Saquon Barkley as well. So we'll see how it all plays out. But just yeah, that wrinkle of Mike Glennon possibly. Is Play that sort of scares me a little bit, but I, you know I, we'll see what I'm happens. Not, we'll see what I, happens. I'm not I'm not bullshitting our listeners either. I really do believe that that Daniel Jones, the the lack of mobility with the switch of quarterback going to Mike Lennon, that could help receivers actually. It's possible. It's very possible. It's a good take there. Um, I'm going with the New England Patriots receiver, and it's a former Niners receiver. It's Kendrick like Bourne. One. <laughs> Rostered in only 15.2% of ESPN he, leagues and 23% of Yahoo this, leagues. This, this would have been my pick if you didn't take it first. <laughs> um, so in the Patriots offense, Jacoby Byers is the clear target leader. Like, I mean, he has 90 targets. The next closest is actually Nelson Aguilar with 54. So, I mean, he's getting all the targets. The big thing, though, is is Byers is not catching a lot of these targets. So he has 90 targets, but he only has 59 receptions. So there's a lot of drops. Maybe there's possibly some overthrows. I don't know what it is, but it's just he's not getting as many of those receptions. This is where Kendrick Bourne becomes more of a fantasy relevant play as far as wide receivers are concerned because he has 53 targets the other season, but he has 42 receptions. So he's doing more with it as well as the fact that he's leading the team in receiving yards and he leads all the wide receivers in touchdowns as well with five. He doesn't lead the team though that's hunter henry he has seven and he's third as far as scrimmage touchdowns behind damian harris as well so he's still involved in this offense as far as getting the ball into the touchdown like getting touchdown scored um in the last two uh, in the two of the last three weeks i should say Bourne has gone over 20 plus fantasy points like i mean he's definitely getting more involved as far as scoring touchdowns like i said which is more important for your fantasy points as well um we talked about hunter henry like how he's a good fantasy tight end but we've also talked about the fact Ted, that he's very touchdown dependent so if he's not scoring a touchdown he becomes absolutely worthless in your fantasy roster what has happened the last two weeks 
zero touchdowns for Hunter Henry in the past two weeks. So, I mean, we're seeing more of the offense gearing towards the receivers. We're seeing the running game getting more involved. I have to see. We're seeing Mac Jones just getting a lot more comfortable in his offense. So he's just how going through his profession hell, a little bit better. <laughs> by the way, how the hell do the Patriots sit at number 15 and they get the best quarterback in this draft class? I hate them. I hate them so much. Yeah, and you talked about this before, but we were talking about teams that are in They're place the worst. For, <laughs> in place for a second half resurgence. Well, yeah, this is also good for Kendrick Board as well. Obviously, the Patriots have a good schedule the rest of the way. They play their final five opponents. The Bills twice is going to be tough, so I'm not saying that's a good matchup. But, but they also honestly, play the dude. The Bills are skidding now. They're not like unbeatable like they were. And they also just lost Tredavis White for the season with an injury that just happened recently. So that's going to be a little bit um, just wondering lost how a that's certain going to team that's going to win the AFC South. <laughs> <laughs> so you bring that up, but yeah, they play the Jaguars. They also play the Colts and they play the Dolphins. So, I mean, it's not, you know, a terrible schedule, but it's also not the easiest either. But still, like I said, I think Kendrick Board scoring the touchdowns makes him a little bit more fantasy relevant. I think Jacoby Byer scored his first career touchdown the other week. So it's <laughs> like, he's not a touchdown scorer. He's a target monster. Gonna, but yeah, that's the big thing. I was going to make this joke later on is Jacoby Myers can catch all the passes he wants to, but that end zone is just like repelling him like it's exactly the weirdest thing i've ever seen but yeah, yes I, he did finally get a touchdown you are correct yeah so i think that this first career touchdown so kendrick board's the one who's actually scored more of the touchdowns and like i said the more that they're going to kendrick board the less that's going to hunter henry so i think he's becoming more of a primary option in that offense so he's widely available he could be a really good sneaky addition for your fantasy roster this week so Tad, we're coming close to the end here. We kind of want to wrap things up pretty quickly. We usually don't spend a lot of time now on the tight ends, the defenses, and the kickers. So, I mean, let's just put it all together here, Tad. Like, who are some of your guys that you want to go after in case you need to replace one of those positions with the teams that are on the bye? We mentioned it earlier. The Browns aren't a bye. The Packers aren't a bye. The Titans and the Panthers aren't a bye. So, some of those have some good defenses. Some have some good kickers, you know. None of them really have a great tight end, I would say. But, yeah. So, who's some guys that you like at all three of those positions? All right. So, you saw me doing the stretch. That was me getting ready for what I call the speed round. So, I'm going to go through this very quickly. <laughs> also, right, real quick shout out. TCU, Sonny Dykes, next best college football coach. All right. <clears throat> tight end, Foster Moreau. Darren Waller's out with a knee injury. Foster Moreau stepping in a Raiders offense that loves to pass it. So, that just makes sense. When it comes to defense, Vikings defense, they're playing Lions offense, and DeAndre Swift is questionable at best with a shoulder injury. So a Lions de offense without DeAndre Swift, that's gold in fantasy. And finally, with kicker Dustin Hopkins, the Bengals-Chargers matchup is probably going to be a shootout, and Dustin Hopkins is the Chargers kicker, so that just makes sense. Good additions I think, there. I, I think gonna I go clocked in there about 10 seconds. <laughs> Uh, going through bides, you know, James O'Shaughnessy, the tight end for the Jacksonville Jaguars, Dan Arnold's on the IR. And even before Dan Arnold was acquired by the Jaguars, O'Shaughnessy was one of the guys that Lords was going to pretty frequently. So he should get a fair share amount of targets going forward. Uh, my defense, I'm actually picking your Indianapolis Colts. They're playing the Houston Texans this week. Uh, they scored 11 points against them earlier this season in week six. So I'd like to think they'll have another good matchup. Don't forget this we week made as Tom well. Brady look like a bitch. <laughs> so I like them this week and then for my kicker I'm going with the 49ers kicker Robbie Gould he's healthy again they're playing the Shocker. Seattle Seahawks it's usually a close game whenever these two teams play so I could see some options uh, I could see some opportunities where the Seattle defense bends but they don't break and so they may have to settle for some field goals which is just scoring opportunities for Robbie Gould so go pick him up if you need a kicker this week so Tad that's our week 13 waiver wire episode there I mean we got a lot of great guys but like we said we say this every single episode Episode. we want to help you guys out so interact with us you see the ticker at the bottom of the screen there all the various handles you can interact with us ask us questions on you know waiver wire stuff start sit you know trade options you know i think we're getting to like the final weeks in certain leagues depending on how your league settings are as far as whether you could do trades or not so if you need some last minute help with some trade advice we're here to help you out with that obviously some dfs stuff sports betting. i mean we cover a lot of things on the this side guys football forum and we want to make sure that we're covering any questions that you may have that we may not necessarily cover in all of our episodes on both YouTube as well as the podcast. So, I mean, you see all the Twitter handles. You got my handle, I'm at the side 23. You got Tad's at Tad the side 94. You got the shill handle, the decide guy. So, interact with us. We definitely want to talk with you guys. Definitely want to give you some great advice. And to everybody that tunes into the videos, tunes into the podcast, gave us a good rating, listens. I mean, just buys our merch. You know, we got such great merch, you know. So, I mean, it's just like, 
anything and everything in between. I mean, we just can't thank you guys enough. Hey, guys, I will say my friends have all said their Decide Guys t-shirts are one of the comfiest t-shirts they own. So be sure to look into that merch. And also, honestly, it doesn't have to just do with football. If you want our opinion on the LeBron James and Isaiah Stewart fight from the other week, like I could not believe that happened. So tweet at us. Just get our thoughts on anything sports. We would love to share with you guys. We want to interact with you guys. So anything you want our thoughts on, Please reach out to us. And as always, everyone, thank you so much for listening and watching.